Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IAS. Today we are going to have a DTRS session. DTRS stands for Daily Tucker Rapid Series. So in this particular rapid series, we are going to cover 10 MCQs from current affairs. And like through these MCQs, we will help you understand the most important current affairs that have been in news, okay? So let us quickly see a quotation related to, let's say like, you know, your preparation. So this quotation comes from Mahatma Gandhi. So he says, live as if you, as if you were to die tomorrow, learn as if you were to live forever. Okay. So this is a very important, let's say like, you know, quotation from Mahatma Gandhi. So he says that what you have to do, like live today, if you were to, if you were to die tomorrow, means like, you know, you have to live to your fullest today itself and learn that learn if you were to live forever okay so like you need to keep on learning you need to keep on growing you need to keep on improving yourself every day so that let's say like you know so that like you have the best knowledge possible right you need to think in that way that like you need to learn so that if you feel that you are going to live forever okay you need to continuously keep on learning this is the thing so with this let us now start the discussion right and so let us see the list of topics that we are going to cover through MCQs today. So today we are going to discuss about a report which is Asia and the Pacific SDG uh, Progress Report 2024. So we are going to discuss about this particular report. We will understand which organization has released this report. What is the significance of this report? What this report talked about India, right? So what, what is the perspective of this report with respect to India? Then we are going to discuss about ASEAN India Trade in Goods Agreement. Okay, so this is a agreement ASEAN India Trade in Goods Agreement. We are going to discuss about this. Then third topic we are going to discuss about the International Single Species Action Plan. Okay, we will understand under which organization this action plan has been launched, where it, it has been launched, what is the significance of, of this action plan. We are going to learn about that. And then we are going to understand about free movement regime okay we will understand about free movement re regime that exists between india and myanmar we will understand let's say like you know when it was initially announced and uh, we will understand about the updates related to this regime all right then we will understand about a species of anaconda which is known as green anaconda okay we will understand let's say like why green anacondas have been in news Recently, a new species of green anaconda has been found. We will understand its scientific name also. We will understand how it is, let's say, linked with green anaconda, okay? And then we are going to discuss about Carolina Azola, okay? Carolina Azola. So this is a species of plant which has been in recently in news. However, UPSC has asked a question related to this topic long back in 1994. We will discuss about this. Then we will discuss about significance of neem tree. Recently, a kind of you know trade a summit has happened in Delhi or is happening in Delhi related to neem trees. We will understand about medicinal properties of neem trees. We will understand where it is found, where it is grown. We will understand what are its medicinal qualities and all. Then under geography and mapping section, we will discuss about a river which is known as river Vaitarna. Okay, river Vaitarna. So we will understand about this river. And finally, we will discuss about a disease which is zombie deer disease. Okay, so zombie deer disease has been in news recently. We will understand does it affect animals? Which animal does it affect? Does it affect human beings also? and how it gets transmitted from one animal to other animal we will understand does it get transmitted to humans also and finally we are going to understand about global initiative on digital health it's a new initiative that promotes uh, digital health so we will discuss about what do we mean by digital health and we will understand about this initiative so now let us start the discussion we are going to cover let's say all these topics through mcqs today <coughs> So this is going to be the first topic and this topic says recently seen in the news Asia and the Pacific SDG progress report right 2024 has been released by okay Asia and the Pacific 
SDG progress report. What do we mean by SDG? SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goal Progress Report. Okay, so this report has been released by this organization, which is known as United Nations Economic and Social Commission for the Asia and the Pacific. So this organization has released this report and in this report basically they have analyzed right how Asia and the Pacific is performing with reference to the targets or the goals that were set under sustainable development goals right SDG goals right. So SDG goals have to be met by all the countries by the year 2030. So these goals are to be achieved from 2015 to 2030. Now we are in 2024, right? Only six years to go. So is Asia and Pacific, right? Uh, in its, uh, let's say, path to achieving the SDG goals or not, right? So this, this report talks about that, okay? So this report has been released by this commission and there are some imp uh, interesting, let's say, outcome of this report. So this report says, that Asia and the Pacific region will need 32 more years. How much? It's going to take 34 more years, right, to achieve the sustainable development goals. Apart from this, this report also highlights about India. What it says about India? It says that India's performance on 85 of the sustainable development goal parameters, right? So there are 169 parameters, there are, let's say, 17 goals, right? So India's performance on on 85 sustainable development goal parameters has improved with progress stagnating in 27 counts and worsening on 36. So on 27 parameters, the progress has stagnated, right? We have come to a standstill, right? We are mo not moving further. However, when we talk about 36 of these parameters, let's say India's performance has worsened, right? And it draws, out, it draws out priorities for enhancing data availability on SDG indicators and all. So this is the thing. Correct answer is option C. Now let us talk about this previous year question. It says India is a member of which among the following. So here they have given a name of three such organizations and they have asked that whether India is a member of all of it, one of it or which of it. Okay, basically correct answer is option three east asia summit india is a member of it india is not a member of the above two organization now with this let us move to another topic <clears throat> so this is the news item asia and the pacific sdg progress report 2024 showcasing transformative uh, transformative actions okay this is question number two for us right so we are going to discuss this uh, this question it says Consider the following statements. They have given two statements and these statements are related to a kind of agreement. It is the ASEAN India Trade in Goods Agreement. They say it was signed in 2009. Second, the value of the India's ASEAN trade is less than 100 billion. Okay. So this statement is right. This statement is wrong because for the year 2020 to 21, basically data is available for this year. The value is greater than 100 and uh, the value of the trade is greater than let's say 110 billion dollars okay greater than 110 billion dollars so that's why second statement is wrong only first statement is right what is the name of the uh, agreement ASEAN India trade in goods agreement ASEAN stands for Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And in ASEAN, there are 10 member countries, right? That includes Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, etc. Okay, so, so the East Asian countries are members of it basically. Okay, so who are the member countries of ASEAN? They include Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, PDR, Malaysia, then Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. So these are the 10 members. So ASEAN has how many member countries? 10 member countries. India is not a member of ASEAN. However, India does have an agreement, trade agreement between uh, uh, like, you know, with ASEAN countries. And this trade agreement is known as the ASEAN India Trade in Goods Agreement. Okay. So this is important. So correct answer is option A only in this case. Okay. So <coughs> this particular agreement, I mean, like, you know, this is world's largest free tra uh, trade areas. And this entered into force on 1st January 2010. When? 1st January 2010. So it's been about 14 years, 
right? More than 14 years that this agreement came into being. Again, we have another question. This question talks about similar agreements. The agreement on Southeast, uh, South Asian free trade area came into effect. So here they are talking about date. So this date is different. Okay, so both statements are incorrect here. So correct answer is option D. This is a previous year question, all right? So with this, now let us move to another topic. But before this, see this new news item. Basically, it was in news. This is Press Information Bureau article, PIB article, okay? So now we have another question. We are going to discuss this question now. This is question number three. It says, the International Single Species Action Plan, okay? This is very important for you to remember the name of this uh, action plan. International Single Species Action Plan is administered by which of the following organization? So here they have given names of various organizations. Okay, one is Global Footprint Network, Worldwide Fund for Nature, International Union for Conservation of Nature, United Nations Environment uh, Program. Okay, so here they have given three statements and the correct answer in this case is option D which is United Nations Environment Program. Okay, so it is administered by this. However, this framework came into being under the auspices of the, like there is an agreement which is known as Convention on Migratory Species. Okay, so we are going to discuss about that as well. So that is known as Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals. Okay, convention, this is in short known as CMS. Convention on the Conservation of Wild, uh, Conservation of Species of Wild Animals. So this, ha this particular thing has a meeting, had a meeting which is known as Conference of Parties 14. In the Conference of Parties 14, basically they have adopted the Single Species Action Plan for Conservation of Hawksbill Turtle. Okay, they have adopted a turtle which is known as Hawksbill Turtle. Right, so they want to conserve or protect this turtle and this turtle belongs to African countries. Which countries? African countries and recently they had a conference of party 14. However, here we need to understand we are talking about uh, convention on the conservation of migratory species of wild animals, right? What it has to do with the United Nations Environment Program. This is also important. So the thing is this thing okay this thing has been developed right this it is developed under the framework on the, of the convention on migratory species and it is administered by united nations environment program okay so the development of this single species action plan has happened under cms but it is administered by the united nations environment program this is important for you to remember okay so some of these species are in news one is hawksbill turtle and another species is also in news. So basically under this international single species action plan, so they want to create action plan for protection of single species at a time. So that like these single species get the maximum possible protection measure, right? And maximum possible conservation must be done of this species. And this is a previous year question. It says that here it says invasive species specialist group that develop the global invasive species database belongs to which one of the following organization? It belongs to International Union for Conservation of Nature. In short, it is known as IUCN, IUCN. We all read about IUCN. IUCN stands for International Union for Conservation of Nature. This organization is very, very important. Why? Because it maintains a red data book, right? That is known as red data book of threatened species. So like, you know, under this, they categorize species into different threat levels that they are facing. Some species are vulnerable, some species are endangered, some spe species are critically endangered, some species have gone extinct, right? So it maintains a red data book, okay? The International Union for Conservation of Nature. So with this, now let us move to another article. <clears throat> so this is the species which is uh, like, you know, COP24 of conservation, uh, uh, like, you know, Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals. So they have adopted single species action plan, protection plan for protection of this hawksbill turtle. You see the turtle? It is known as hawksbill turtle. Okay. Now... <clears throat> 
now we came to another uh, question this is question number four it says consider the following statements regarding the free movement regime okay so free movement regime exists between india and myanmar okay it exists between india and myanmar okay let me quick quickly draw the map of india right uh, so that you understand so this is the map of the northeastern portion of india all right this is the map of northeastern portion of india and where is myanmar located myanmar is located to the let's say you know to the east side of northeast india so this is the location of myanmar so basically long back what has happened long back colonial powers were ruling on india and on myanmar so they have drawn boundary between india and myanmar so the boundaries have been drawn by the colonial power however to the both sides of the boundary right to both sides of the boundary there live people right there exist people who have ethnic ties with one another who have cultural ties with one another who have familial ties with one another so along these bordering regions right there are people who are tribal people right there are tribal people and these tribal people has familial relation with one another so maybe like you know cousin of a person remain uh, lives in india near the border some person live in myanmar near the border so basically those people who are residing right to either side of border at a distance of around 16 kilometer right they are beneficiaries of free movement regime they are beneficiaries of free movement regime so we are going to understand what happens in the free movement regime when this free movement regime was first uh, let's say like you know instrumented so the free movement regime has been enacted in the year of 2018 by the government of india okay so india has a policy right india has a policy which is known as act east policy so under this act east policy we, what we do we actually do something for our eastern neighbors so that like india can maintain very good relation with those neighbors so under act east policy we have instrumented or we have let's say like you know initiated the free movement regime wherein people who are residing 16 km in either side of the border between india and myanmar so they will be able to cross over the border right and these people should be tribal people and for crossing the border for coming from myanmar to india they will be given visa free travel so what all they need is border pass what they need they need a border pass to move from myanmar to india or to move move from india to myanmar only border pass and this border pass is given by let's say respective authorities from both the countries okay so once a person comes from myanmar to india with a border pass so border pass are generally valid right border pass are generally valid for a period of 1 year okay for a period of 1 year and so once a person visits here from myanmar so he will be able to stay in india for 2 weeks then he has to go back and so like in a year he can have multiple movements between india and myanmar so this is let's say this this regime has been initiated but what has happened later on india has realized right it was instrumented in 2018 but in 2021 what has happened in february 2021 in myanmar there was a military coup okay there was a military coup and after this military coup the military junta has come into power right has come into power in myanmar and so they have toppled the democratically elected government and now there is an internal turmoil going on in myanmar okay so civil unrest or civil war is happening in myanmar so now many people are crossing over the border so that's why the home minister of india has decided right he, he has recently notified that the government has decided to suspend the free movement regime between india and myanmar okay so that's why this topic is in news so having understood this let us now understand about these statements related to this question okay so it says consider the following statements regarding free movement regime okay so they have given three statements 
Number one, it says it is a mutually agreed arrangement between India and Myanmar that allows citizens of both countries to travel within 16 km on either side of Indo-Myanmar border. This statement seems correct because nothing is wrong except one factor that normal citizens of the country, right, normal citizens of the country cannot avail the benefit of free movement regime, cannot avail the benefit of visa free travel or like using border pass. It is meant for tribal people, okay, it is meant for tribal people. So people who are tribals in Myanmar or in India who reside within 16 km of border, they can travel on either side okay so first statement is incorrect second it was implemented in 2018 as part of central government's act is policy this statement is right now we have another statement it says it allows people to cross the border by producing a required visa and can stay up to two weeks okay so these people do not need visa they need border pass okay as we, as we discussed they need border pass okay so correct answer is only one means like second statement is right the first and third statements are not correct and here we have a previous year question two statement uh, these are let's say like you know previous year means questions okay these are means question this question has been asked by UPSC in 2020 this question has been asked by UPSC in 2016 right what you need to do you can write down these statements these questions you can practice their answers in your free time right so with this let us now quickly move to another question now we have another question it says so some scientific terms are mentioned these terms I mean like if you have read it you will be knowing otherwise you won't be knowing so it is very factual but like you know terms in news is important right so it is important so it says recently the terms unactus marinus and unactus akaima have been seen in the news as associated with right uh, snakes birds fishes butterflies so they are snakes okay when we talk about unactus marinus they are let's say like you know largest variety of snakes they are green anaconda what green anaconda where they are found they are found in brazil where in brazil they are found in amazon rainforest right generally they are found in amazon rainforest so this is let's say like green uh, anaconda is found apart from this there is another species which is known as unactus Akaima, okay, so Unactus Akaima. So when we talk about Unactus Akaima, they look very similar to how green anacondas look, okay, their looks are very similar to green anacondas. However, right, I mean like you cannot easily distinguish, guys, you cannot easily make differences between them because their sizes, looks, everything seem to be very similar to one another. However, if when we talk about the diversity between them, right, by a, a biological diversity or kind of genetic diversity between them it is around five percent diversity is there between them okay five percent diversity the diversity is very high right although they look very similar and if i talk about the diversity between human beings and apes we know apes right so like human beings have evolved from apes the diversity between human beings and ape is only two percent right they look so much different from one another however when we talk about diversity between these two uh, types of anacondas it is five percent and they look very similar to one another okay so now we have another question previous year question it says this dalbargia okay dalbargia species associated with which one of the following rosewood okay this is a previous year question now let us move to another uh, so before this this is one of the image of green anaconda if you want to see green anaconda on youtube search green anaconda you will see i mean like you know they are so big species of anaconda okay so i mean like you know their length may be up to seven meters which is about 
uh, let's say 24 26 feet length okay like that they are very lengthy or they are very bulky uh, let's say like you know snakes now let us talk about another question this question is also important it says consider the following statements they have given two statements okay so two statement statement one statement two so what we need to do in these type of questions first of all read first statement and identify whether this statement is correct or incorrect then you need to read the second statement and then you need to identify whether it is correct or incorrect then you have to reason out that whether the second st uh, statement is correct explanation of first statement or not okay if it is not the correct explanation then the answer will be different if, if it is the correct explanation then the answer will be different so four options are given so let us read these statements number one it says the Carolina Azola okay Carolina Azola is a more digestible and nutritious than other varieties of Azola for humans and grow only in tropical regions okay so now let us understand what do we mean by Azola so Azola is a variety of plant species what it is a variety of plant species so human beings can eat it it is very much digestible than other varieties of Azola however they are not only found in tropical regions they are found in North America okay they are found in North America North America is a very cold region okay they are found in North America tropical region means where the temperature is very high between the tropics means let's say this is earth let me draw a diagram for you okay let's say this is the earth this line is known as zero degree latitude which is known as equator then there are two other lines the northern line is 23.5 degree half degrees uh, let's say like you know north latitude then 23.5 degrees south latitude okay so this is known as tropic of cancer and this one is known as tropic of capricorn so the thing is like anything that lies between these two lines anything that lies between the two uh, these two lines right they are uh, they are known to be lying in tropical region however here they are talking about azola species azola is found in north america north america lies beyond the tropic of cancer i mean like beyond 23 and a half degree like that okay so that's why first statement is wrong it is incorrect okay first statement is incorrect now let us move to second statement it says all azola species are nitrogen fixation plants used across the world for green manure to fertilize crops this statement is right okay so the thing is first statement was wrong second statement is right option d says statement one is incorrect but statement two is correct okay option d is right in this case which option option d is right now we have another question it is a previous year question it says which of the following is or are used as bio fertilizers okay bio fertilizers number one azola and number two is blue green agri algae okay they are used as what bio fertilizers okay now with this let us move to another question this is another question question number seven for the day with reference to neem tree okay neem tree is very very important it is considered to be sacred tree in india i mean like there are people who worship neem tree there are people let's say who know the medicinal properties associated with neem tree neem is also used in urea neem coated urea it is a medicinal plant right so it has antibacterial properties like that so let let us read some statements related to neem it says with reference to neem tree consider the following statements they have given three statements to us number one it is native to the indian subcontinent is it found in indian subcontinent yes is it native to indian subcontinent yes that's also right statement one is right second it is tolerant to high temperature up to 70 degrees centigrade this is wrong it is tolerant to high temperatures but not up to 70 degree but up to 49 degree centigrade okay second statement is wrong third it acts as a natural air filter okay it acts as a natural air filter tapping dust particles and absorbing gaseous pollutants this is also right 
okay third statement is also right related to it so first and three means option b only two of them are right okay first and third statements are right in this question okay so why we are discussing about the neem trees at this point of time because recently what has happened the neem summit and global neem tree fair is being organized by collaboration with indian council of agricultural research icar central agroforestry research institute jhansi in new delhi so in new delhi in delhi they are having a uh, fair a trade fair which is neem summit and global neem trade fair is happening in new delhi so that's why this neem tree is in news okay so neem trees are uh, like the climate type in which they uh, they are found is evergreen tree deciduous in uh, in uh, let's say drier areas okay they are found here so upsc has asked a question related to this in 2014 also it says with reference to neem tree consider the following statements uh, so they have given multiple statements number 1 neem oil can be used as pesticide to control the proliferation of some species of insects and mites neem oil has application in pharmaceutical industry this is right so they are not used in manufacturing uh, biofuels okay they are not used why because they are used let's say for better uh, let's say like you know uh, better usage and all so correct answer is option c 1 and 3 question number 8 right so three more questions 8 9 and 10 with reference to river vaitarna vaitarna okay this is a river this river is let's say like you know flows to the north of maharashtra basically to the north of mumbai it is a west flowing river west flowing river means let's say like the, uh, this is a river if this river flows in this direction right from east to west this is known as west flowing river if a river flows in this direction that is known as east flowing river when we talk about vaitarna river it is a west flowing river okay here it has asked it is an east flowing river this is wrong okay east flowing river why west east because like we have cardinal direction east west north and south these are the cardinal directions that we have right so this river is a west flowing river it originates in mahendragiri hills this is wrong it originates in sahyadri hills okay it originates in sahyadri hills i will showcase a map also with you if it is included third it is home to the dangerous bull sharks okay here we find sharks also it is home to this so only one of the statement is correct which is third statement is correct in this question okay now we have a previous year question also similarly i mean like here Uh, consider the following rivers they have uh, asked about rivers which of the uh, brahmani nagavali suvarna lekha vamsadhara which of the above rise from the eastern ghats okay so eastern ghats western ghats to understand about this concept again you need to understand about the map of india right you need to understand about map of india so let's consider this is the map of india so this this region right towards the eastern side this is known as eastern ghats okay this region is known as eastern ghats and this region is known as western ghats so when we talk about this river brahmani and vamsadhara okay bra uh, so when we talk about this nagavali and vamsadhara so these rivers originate in the eastern ghats over here they originate over here and they flow let's say like you know to the western side and all so this is the thing so with this let us now move to another topic with reference to zombie deer disease okay so this is a name of disease this disease has been in news recently it says zombie deer disease with reference to zombie deer disease consider the following statements they have given three statements to us okay number 1 it says the disease is caused due to abnormal growth of prion proteins found in the brains of animals this is right okay 
so when this kind of protein which is prion uh, prion protein if if there is an abnormal growth of this protein in the animal's brain so like you know uh, so then it causes zombie deer disease what happens in zombie deer disease let's consider there is a deer which is affected by this so what will happen the i mean like you know the co bodily coordination of the deer will will not be normal i mean like you know that deer will not be having proper bodily coordination and apart from this the deer i mean like you know the muscle movement in the deer will not be normal so that's why the deer acts like a zombie so that's why it is known as zombie deer disease the disease can spread from animals to humans in case of direct contact this is wrong scientists have successfully manufactured a vaccine to cure the mad cow disease which also works against zombie deer disease now see so far it is found that this disease affects animals and it transmits from one animal to another animal so far no human transmission has been seen that like none of the human being have been affected by zombie deer disease so as of now research is not available data is not available so that's why it, it we can consider that it does not spread from animal to human second it says like you know there is a vaccine manufactured for mad cow disease which also works against zombie deer disease but the thing is related to zombie deer disease no vaccine has been developed so far no vaccine okay no vaccine is available and this vaccine does not work against it okay so only one of the statement is correct which is first statement now we have a previous year question you go through this question you, yourself right we have given answer also to that so this is a deer zombie deer disease hits america here's why it's a concern for humans also okay so it is considered that like you know this can have problem for the humans but so far no data is available related to this okay now this is another question question number 10 the last question for the day it says which of the following statement regarding global initiative on digital health Uh, which of the following statement is correct basically they are asking about correct okay here they should have asked consider the following statements regarding global initiative for on digital health okay consider the following statements they have given two statement it is launched by the world health organization this statement is right it will facilitate the implementation of global strategy on so basically global strategy on digital health is a separate strategy that is already functional okay so it is not going to facilitate the implementation of this this is already implemented however this global initiative on digital health it's going to accelerate this one okay not the implementation but the acceleration of it okay it is already implemented all right so correct answer is option a only one and this is a previous year question ayushman bharat digital mission upsc has asked this question in 2023 22 it says with reference to Ayushman Bharat digital mission they have given three statements only third statement is right it has seamless portability across country across the country okay so within India so it can be uh, portable across the country like that so WHO launches digital health platform agreed upon in G20's presidency all right so this is the thing so that's all from my side for the day Thank you so much everyone for attending today's session. I hope you have a good day ahead. Thank you.